Hey class, we're gonna in this video we're gonna look at finding a confidence interval when sigma or population standard deviation is known. For this particular video, we're gonna look at this critical cutoff score and in the second example, this critical cutoff score. Now what these Z cutoff values are is I'm just gonna, for example, take the 95% confidence interval. If we were to look at a normal distribution, we're looking for the cutoff scores, which is the Z with a subscript C, where 95% or 0.95 area is between those two values. So anything in this shaded area. That's what we're looking for. And for that, it would be positive and negative 1.96 as your respective cutoffs. But the Z cutoff, the Z sub C values, we always just take the positive one. This video, after I do videos, I always put the inked version in your Google Drive folder for your class. So you'll be able to go in there and access these cutoff scores. And also, you'll be able to find um, these instructions for doing confidence intervals with just basic skills and a calculator. In another video, I will actually go in and show you how to do a confidence interval on a TI-84. It's very quick that way. Uh, for some reason, SALT on your WebAssign account does not... Um, have a direct salt button to get to it. So that's why I'm taking this route and showing you how to do it by hand and also on the graphing calculator. So we're going to get to it. In the blue box, those are the steps for finding a confidence interval for the population mean when you do know the population standard deviation. Okay, so let's do an example. Allen's hummingbird has been studied by zoologist Bill Alther. Suppose a small group of 13 Allen's hummingbirds has been under study in Arizona. The average weight for these birds is, and that should have a bar over it. Let me put that in here. There we go. 3.15 grams. Based on previous studies, we can assume that the weights of Allen's hummingbirds have a normal distribution with a population standard deviation of 0.28 gram. When finding, and we're going to pick an 80% confidence interval, what is the critical value for confidence level? Give your answer to two decimal places. Well, from that chart on the first slide, that was 1.28. And again, that's the top chart on the first slide. Find an 80% confidence interval for the average weights of Allen's hummingbirds in the study region. What is the margin of error? Well, to find margin of error, That is your cutoff z-score times your population deviation given over the square root of your sample size. For this particular problem, that's 1.28 times 0.28 over, and then our sample size was... 13. Where did I see that? Mm, yeah, up here at the very top. So that'll be square root of 13 in the denominator. I knew I'd seen that somewhere. Okay, so rounded to two decimal places. 
1.28 times 0.28 divided by square root of 13, I get 0.099, so that's actually going to be 0.10. Okay, now for your confidence interval, you're going to have a lower limit and an upper limit. Your lower limit is your mean from your sample minus that margin of error we just calculated. And the upper end is the average plus the margin of error. For this problem, that is 3.15 minus 0.10. And 3.15 plus 0.10. Okay. So that gives us a confidence interval of 3.05 up to 3.25. And so what that tells us, we're 80% confident that the actual population mean of all Allen's hummingbirds would fall inside this interval. It's a best guess we can do based on our sample. What conditions are necessary for your calculations? In this problem, we were told that the weights are normally distributed and we are given sigma, the population standard deviation. If our sample size is 30 or more, then by central limit theorem, we can use one of those as justifications or a condition. But we only had a sample size of 13, so that's a no-go. Part C, interpret your results in the context of this problem. And it's just as I said earlier, we are 80% confident that the true average weight of Allen's hummingbirds falls within this interval. Part D, which equation is used to find the sample size n for estimating mu or population average when sigma is known? Inside this blue box, there's a formula for sample size. And whenever you calculate, you're going to want to always round up to the nearest whole number. Luckily, in WebAssign, you're always prompted to round up to the nearest whole number. Even if it comes out like 6.1, you're still going to call it 7. Find the sample size necessary for an 80% confidence level with a maximal margin of error of 0.13 for the mean weights of the hummingbirds. So what this type of problem does is if you set, preset your error that you're willing to have, then this formula tells you how much, how big your sample needs to be to have a certain percentage of confidence and a set margin of error. So this is the formula we're going to go after, and we have n equals, okay, our cutoff value was 1.28. That was our Z cutoff. Our sigma was 0.28, and that was given in the problem. And then this time we have a predetermined error of 0.13. Be very careful when you calculate this. If you want to calculate what's inside first and then square your answer, that's totally appropriate. If you're careful, what I'm going to do is open up parentheses, 1.28 times 0.28 divided by 0.13, close parentheses, and square it all. And I get 7.6. So no matter what you get there, if it's got any decimal portion to it, you're going to round up. So it would take a sample size of 8 to construct an 80% confidence interval with a max margin of error of 0.13. Now we have a second example we're going to go through all from the start. 
uh, just work it all the way through. Overproduction of uric acid in the body can be an indication of cell breakdown. This may be an advanced indication of illness such as gout, leukemia, or lymphoma. Over a period of months, an adult male patient has taken nine blood tests for uric acid. All right, I'm gonna make a note of that so I don't lose it later. The mean concentration was 5.30 milligrams per deciliter. The distribution of uric acid in healthy adult males can be assumed to be normal. And we are given the population standard deviation sigma. Part A, find a 95% confidence interval for the population mean concentration of uric acid in this patient's blood. What is the margin of error? Okay, so first let's do margin of error. That one, if you'll recall, has a formula of Z cutoff times sigma over square root of N. For this particular problem, that's 1.96. If you'll recall, from the first slide in the Z cutoff table, it was the first slide, very top chart, a 95% confidence interval contains a Z score of, excuse me, cutoff Z of 1.96. Sigma is given as 1.89. And this person had nine blood tests Every once in a while, you'll have a sample size that's actually a perfect square. Don't always think that's the case. All right, so we're gonna round this to two decimal places. 1.96 times 1.89 divided by three. 1.23. Okay, so that's your error. And another way to look at margin of error, it's this number, 1.23. If you were to double it, it would be 2.46. 2.46 is the entire width of your confidence interval. A margin of error is from the average to the edge, either low or high. But I don't want you to get caught up in all that. Just be able to use your formula and pick out the important information. So our confidence interval is the average minus the error and average plus the error. So that's 5.30. 5.30 minus 1.23, that's going to give us 4.07, 5.30 plus 1.23, that's 6.53, and that would be your confidence interval. If you're ever given a confidence interval and asked to find the error, this is how you would do it. The upper minus the lower divided by two. So you'd have 6.53 minus 4.07 over two which is 2.46 over 2, which is 1.23. Now, this problem doesn't ask you to do that. I just wanted as an extra to show you if you were given the confidence interval and asked to find the margin of error, that's how you would do it. You would take your upper minus lower, divide that by 2.
Part B, what conditions are necessary for your calculations? Again, in this one, we're told that we are assuming the distribution of uric acid in healthy adult males is normally distributed and sigma is given. The confidence interval that we found, we are 95% confident that the true uric acid level for this patient falls within this interval. Again, we can only take what we know about the nine blood test, but we're 95% sure that the actual uric acid level would fall in our confidence interval. And finally, part D, find the sample size necessary for a 95% confidence level with a maximal margin of error of 1.18. Always round up to the nearest whole number. So N is equal to... Cut off Z times sigma over your predetermined margin of error. That's 1.96 times 1.89 divided by 1.18. Okay, so I'm going to calculate this on my 1.96 times 1.89 divided by 1.18, I get 3.1, so that tells us that we at least have to get a sample size of four blood levels, uric acid levels. 